Good morning, one and all. The topic for today's discussion is about coronavirus. As a dentist, we understand the importance of knowing about this virus because dentist stands the highest chance of being infected from these virus because our work area is in the oral cavity and then thereby the dentist being infected by these viruses the chances stand high to start with the human coronavirus is not new to us it was discovered as early as in 1960 it was classified as an rna virus as a single standard rna virus and it is also comes under the classification of an enveloped virus why because these viruses have a bilayered lipid membrane this is the structure of the coronavirus the virus associated with the covid-19 outbreak originated in wuhan china this virus is also called as covid-19 or sars-cov-2 if you look into the the structure of the virus it has an en it has an outer envelope if you can see over the envelope you have various proteins for example we have the spike glycoprotein you have the envelope small membrane protein e we have the membrane protein you have the nucleoproteins all of these proteins which is present on the envelope of the virus helps in the virus getting attached to the human cell migration of these viruses into the human cell and replication within the human cell and then within the envelope we have the genomic rna as it is being classified as under an rna virus this is the structure of the corona virus so we are talking about coronavirus pandemic what do we understand from the term pandemic pandemic means a widespread of disease which is happening in different geographical areas of the world at the same time so we call it as a pandemic in current uh, statistics if we understand that corona disease has spread across almost nearing 200 countries these viral epidemics or pandemics are not new to humans it has already happened let us go back for example certain virus epidemics for example we are aware of the sars coronavirus which happened in 2002-2003 the h1n1 infection is which happened in 2009 the middle east respiratory syndrome coronavirus uh, infections which happened in 2012 that's certain other examples we had the the swine flu which happened in 1918 so all these viral epidemics and pandemics have been happening across the globe if we can compare between the current covid-19 the middle east respiratory syndrome and the sars if we can compare the number of cases have been recorded for example by means of severe acute respiratory syndrome sars is just around 8422 for a middle east respiratory syndrome is just 2500 Whereas for coronavirus, it is across 30 lakhs across the globe. This is as on March 5th, but we have crossed 30 lakhs as of current day. And the death toll has crossed in lakhs. And then the countries, as I told you, it is around 200 countries odd. So coronavirus has been termed as a, a pandemic because of its widespread geographical spread across the globe the coronavirus originates from the bat and also the rat the rat and the bat have increased amount of viral load and then through an intermediate host the intermediate host can be a pig can be a camel can be an anteater can be a cow and from these intermediate host it goes into the humans so it is a zoonotic spread from the animals it is getting transmitted to the human and from the human it can transmit to the other human so looking into the spread of the virus it is zoonotic in nature 
because it comes from the animal to the humans and then from one human to another human. So how does the coronavirus spread from one human to another human? We are well aware of the, the droplet infection. When does the droplet infection happen? When someone coughs or sneezes, the droplet infection happens. Or when the person coughs, the droplet through the droplet the viral particles can get transmitted and then it lands on a surface and then it can be there on the surface for a few hours and when some person comes in contact with that and then again touches his face so the virus particle is loaded onto his face then he becomes infected so that is how the spread of virus happens to the humans an interesting concept of when a patient what is the distance these droplets travel when a patient coughs and when a patient sneezes? For example, when a patient coughs, the droplets travel to a distance of around 2 meters. The same patient, when he sneezes, the droplets travel up to a maximum distance of around 8 meters. So imagine if this is the infected patient and if he coughs, it reaches 2 meters. If he sneezes, he can reach up to 8 meters. That is why the WHO has recommended social distancing to around to be around 6 meters. So if you can follow that, the chances of being infected in the community sort of gets reduced. So when a patient sneezes, the amount of droplet which is being produced is around 40,000 to 1 lakh. And when a patient coughs, it's between 3,000 to 5,000. And when a patient talks, it's around 600 droplets per minute. So when a patient sneezes, that is the time when maximum amount of viral load from the patient can spread. So that is why social distancing and following cough etiquettes and sneezing etiquettes helps much. To cover on cough etiquettes and sneezing uh, etiquettes, we have another presentation which will be done. But it is important to understand why sneezing results in spread of disease. Why coughing results in spread of disease. And another important factor which you need to understand is when you sneeze, the droplets travel at a speed of 75 miles per hour to 100 miles per hour. So that is the, the speed with which the, the droplets sort of spread. So you always need to keep a, a note of all these things so that you can control on the coronavirus disease spread. Now, let me introduce a new term. It is called as R0. You can see the slide. It is called as R0 or R0. So what is this? This is an important grading which is being done for a, a contagious infection. Example, a disease R0 value only applies when everyone in a population is completely vulnerable to the disease. When does it happen? Imagine there is no, no one has been vaccinated. We do not have a vaccine for COVID-19 no one has had the disease before before 2019 december no one had the novel covid 19 disease and there is no way to control the spread of the disease if a disease falls under these three categories it becomes a, a contagious infectious disease and then the scientists will give a grading of r not what is r not for an example if there is an infected patient from this infected patient how many other patients can become infected so that is called as an r naught for example if one patient is having coronavirus if he can transmit the disease to two other patients so the r naught value becomes two so let us few see few of the slides to understand this better i was talking about nine 1918 swine flu it killed almost 5 crore people across the globe if you can see the r naught value 
it was around 1.4 to 2.8 in the sense one infected spine flu patient transmitted the disease to a maximum of 2.8 patients so, so that is the r not value in the same swine flu and it happened in 2009 it had the r not value of 1.4 to 1.6 but still the death rate was completely controlled because we had a, a vaccine developed for swine flu so the outbreak was much more less so for covid 19 what is the r not value if we see for covid 19 every single infected person can transmit the disease to 2 to 2.5 this was uh, uh, when the disease was spreading across china and to rest of the parts current trends they say covid 19 has an r not value of around four to five patients for example if there is one infected person with corona it can spread up to a maximum of four to five patients so that is an r not value remember this term because it is might be new to you so remember this term about r not so let us quickly so we do the the replication cycle so first in the replication cycle is entry we were discussing about the entry of the virus that is by means of a, a droplet infection a person who is infected he coughs or sneezes this virus particle travels across in the droplet and then directly it can land either on a surface or either a person can inhale the droplets and then he becomes an entry point for the virus so once the virus enters into the human system it finds a suitable host cell to go and get itself attached and then it starts to replicate and then release the virus into the human system so we can see imagine that is the coronavirus it gets itself attached to a receptor what is a receptor we call it it has been it attaches itself to the angiotensin converting enzyme receptor so once the virus gets itself a suitable receptor it gets attached to it and by means of this receptor the virus particle travels into the cell into the human cell it is sort of like a hijacking the cell so the virus hijacks the human cell and makes the human uses the energy within the cell to produce rna polymerase chains so that is what happens the rna genome duplicates itself it starts to replicate and then forms a a new viral particle within the human cell and this virus sorts of gets introduced into the intracellular fluid into the blood system so that is how the virus has an entry point has a, a good receptor to get itself attached and from there it replicates within the human cell so the virus once it enters what is the incubation period the incubation period for covid 19 is thought to extend to 14 days so up to the 14 days will be the incubation period so the virus enters inside the body it hijacks the human cells it starts to replicate within the human cells and within four to five days the patient shows signs and symptoms what are the signs and symptoms of covid 19 it is fever dry cough sore throat dyspnea and diarrhea okay so these are the most common signs and symptoms representing covid 19 so what is the percentage almost 87.9 percentage of them have fever dry cough 67.7 percent fatigue 38.1 percent okay so these are the typical signs and symptoms of covid 19 if we can have a comparison table between covid 19 common cold flu and allergies we can see that fever is commonly in covid 19 dry cough common in covid 19 shortness of breath is common in covid 19 but it is not seen in common cold it is not seen in flu allergies it can happen okay so that is how you sort of try to understand the disease differentiating itself from common cold flu and certain other allergies we need to understand what happens within the lung the lung sorts of branches 
from the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and then the alveolar sac finally. Within the alveolar sac, there are two types of cell. One is cell type 1. This what happens is for free gaseous exchange from the capillaries, oxygenated, deoxygenated breath, gaseous exchange happens. And there is something called as a, a type 2 alveolar sac cell. This type 2 alveolar sac cell produces something called as a surfactant. This surfactant keeps the alveoli open or it maintains the shape of a, a small balloon. Otherwise, the alveoli sort of collapses. The what happens in an infected patient is this coronavirus sort of gets attached to the, the alveolar sac type 2 cell to the angiotensin converting enzyme. I think I'm clear. These coronavirus sort of gets itself attached to type 2 alveolar sac cell as I told you. Type 2 alveolar sac cell produces surfactant. So once the, the coronavirus sort of gets replicating within the type 2 alveolar sac cell, what happens is it cannot produce surfactant. So if surfactant is not produced, what happens is the alveolar sac sort of cannot maintain the, the balloon shape and it sort of gets collapsed. And then you all know because of an infection from the virus, there will be inflammatory response from the body. So then there will be an inflammatory exudate. So then there is fluid accumulation within the alveolar sac. So the alveolar sac cannot maintain its shape. There is inflammation, the host response system, inflammatory mediators. So the fluid sort of gets collected, collected, collected. And already I was telling you how the virus cells hijacks the human cell. And then all these hum human cells starts to replicate the virus, 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 and the virus load increases and then it spreads all across the lung. So what happens is because of all these events, it becomes a, a mnemonic lung and then it results in a, a scarred tissue within the lung and then the disease progresses. Okay, so that is what is happening within the lung. So that is why we call it as SARS, severely 